dates of three of all the meetings in order for December 3rd, 2019. The result of the agenda for December 3rd, 2019, the by Councilor Friesen, second by the Mayor Tony Favor. Result of the minutes of the November 19, 2019 regular Council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Council Morio, second by Mayor Tony. All in favor? All right, we'll move right down to 6.1. Result of the building permits 8519 through 8819 with a total estimated value of $170,000 being received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Tony, second by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Mm -hmm. 7.1. Resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Moved by Mayor Tony, second by Councilor Gray. Questions? Councilor Delorier. I see we're preparing for. Uh... Uh, name a street after a uh, prominent citizen or co name the street. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that's probably something similar to what we do, like co op drive or whatever, so it's not actually going to be the street name. The one way we change the name is just. Is there any streets that we can. That I, I know you can't, it's really hard to change the name of a street when people are already living there, but is, is there any streets that are in the works that, you know, say you were just talking about there? That we could actually name the street after this gentleman because it's just when we do this i don't know it might it might it just seems like a little bit of a cop but i'd like to actually have a street <coughs> that this person great we, we can name the subdivision we could have the west first street southwest uh they're just getting subdivided now we have to do road closure bylaws on the old drawing and application of the past previously so we, we can ask that that be registered. I understand the significance of naming this particular street because it's where he lived. Yeah. But, I, but he was a pretty uh, important fellow. I think he'd be worthy of having an actual street named after him. So I, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But I just, in the future, maybe, maybe we should even have a committee where, where we have a list of of people added to a list where when the streets come up for being named, you can pull off off that list. And I know it doesn't come up very often where we get a chance to name a new street. Yeah, the, the package is going to come on the 17th of the end of it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I agree, like we've always said that coding it's basically the signs. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, I know that that's not on the agenda for tonight, but I just seen it in here and it's just something that I want to plant the seed that maybe we should actually, actually be in the street after this person. Uh, Mr. Crowley, you have a question? Uh, actually, it was, it, it was about the experience in Grand Avenue. Uh, it was a very new where an already named street where she changed the name and we'll not get the end of it. Well, I, I, yes, I don't want to change once. If there's businesses or, or people living on it, I don't think we want to change that. I think you can only change streets that are not made. Not where nobody is you're living talking, on yet. You're talking about the cost of legal land. Well, because if you've been known forever, all your name, if you're a business, you're, you're at 503 Main Street, and all of a sudden you're at 503 Jason Gloria Way, people think you moved, you got to change all your context. Like that's a nightmare for all the people. Councilor Ray. Nothing I answer. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Okay, for the discussion, uh, Councillor Royal and Councillor Fraser. Mr. Poole and Jim. It says for Jim for handyman storage and stall. Is that like cutting into the case of the concrete mat materials? Yeah. Was that not part of the project for the handyman building or is this an addition? This was an addition. So this was, uh, it was, it was basically nothing we did with our own materials. It was basically a jackhammer. So it's not like we're moving in the ground. We're in the time. It's just on the floor. We're in the slope. And we're creating a place. We're just 
Uh, I just want to thank you, Mr. Poole, and the Public Works Department for uh, providing assistance to the Chamber of Commerce and, and um, putting their helping with the lights. I saw that on your report. The street name, I trust that that will still be done for that street and that they run for five years, right? That's the generally when we rename a street that it only holds for five years or is it a permanent? It's as long as there is, there is a permanent area. Oh, okay. It's only in the resolution of the state. Okay. And then you have on here as well. <coughs> um, where would it go? Preparing information for airport policies, fuel, etc. How is that coming? Are we close to? Uh, I, want, I, want, I keep saying I want to get it done this week, but uh, yes, uh, my plan was to get it to you today. <coughs> but uh, you'll be the first to be close. <laughs> Thank it you. Done. It's drafted the policies. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Two to one resulted in October 2019 Smart River Anti Transit Plan Report. We received this information moved by Tony, second by Councilor Gray. Discussion, Councilor Gray. The mileage, I'm just confused. It doesn't make sense to me. It's like a one stuck. We 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 I'm confident that that is a typo and that will be corrected. Yes. Thank you. For the discussion? Just just uh, on that, have we um, a plan for what, going forward? Given that Ken has left and, and Cal is restricting what he's doing, I, I talked to a couple of clients who they would like to take on. And that uh, has been brought out um, on the short term over the next uh, month or so. I think we're in okay shape. Okay. Uh, but uh, yes, that has been brought up as a possible solution. Did they come and see you? No, it was brought up in uh, we had a general meeting about how to take care of the van over, especially coming up in the Christmas period and things like that. So. Good discussion. All in favor? Seven point two two results of the CLs from the AMM 2019 Fall Convention Report. We received this information moved by Tony, Secretary of Council of Reason, so a very reflective report. Now that we have all gaps, so any questions or comments about that? It's not about it's about the convention, not about the report, but um, I assume somebody's going to come up to all the those that weren't there. How do you think there is a meeting to pick? Who do people want to do? I assume they're going to pick that. I think they it worked pretty well. Uh, you no know, uh, no minister pulled out a checkbook and started writing or anything, really? but they did uh, give us hope that uh, they are working on several files that would affect that uh, could be beneficial to us. Um, uh, on each one of the files, I, I guess at the next council meeting, I'll put forward a, a short report on each one of the meetings, uh, just uh, just an overview. But really, the, the big picture is that uh, no checks are forthcoming, uh, but they are they are working with what we've been asking. Uh, no one said they were only ridiculous asks. They seem like we just uh, reasonable asks that we were asking for. So um, we're hoping to help us. In some way. I just didn't know. The only one that was, again, wasn't surprising because it was the same as last year, was the um, Justice Center again. 
relatively low numbers, so if you're conservative, so like yes, well below even executive director positions. And so I was a little astounded by that, but that's the future of the new talks. I think obviously you get nothing more than the some more data back. And, and on your question, I'm sure that some of the members that were here or there, they will be happy to put it on their experience what they heard. If you have any further questions to that, feel free to ask because we did meet with different people that have had opposite different perspectives of maybe what we've heard. So, okay. any further questions? Okay. All in favor? It's carried. All right, so point three, the city of Owen part is council report. So we'll start with Council Gray. Uh, I don't have a lot to report. I have, you know, I have lots of little issues that people want to down, down, down ask the board to do things like new policy with respect to gardening, and, uh, recycling, and taxes, and things like that. But uh, we haven't had any meetings. I would note we have three or four major meetings coming up. We have a rise meeting coming up on uh, <coughs> two weeks from Wednesday. I think it's the 18th. We have next on the 12th, we'll be there, but Councillors Antonio and Gray will be. We have the East One Valley Recreation Meeting um, to develop a plan for deciding whether or not we can have a, what level of property plan we can have. Um, so that's the huge meeting. Of course, Anna and Calgary, that's a choice, I guess, and I'd rather not say Given the pros and my alternatives, I think I can go to the discovery. Um, I mean, so I won't be able to attend the strategic planning meeting unless you want me to attend my top one. I'm certainly attend my top one. All of you, it's not really a great forum for it, but I can. Uh, it's your call. I can send you. I, I've made uh, I, several sheets of where we are, where we sort of show that. If I can send that to everyone, especially you, maybe you give us feedback for the meeting. I'll do whatever you want. Like, I don't attend if you want, but it's just it's, it's the kind of form is not great for um, telephone participation. But, but if you want me present, being the guy who's running the pitch, maybe you can accept the fact that just get the gene. That's the glory. Not the report. I didn't get to go to AM this year, first time in nine or ten years that I've ever done. I'm pretty sad. Yeah, we were very disappointed that they didn't get to see you this year. Just a shout out again to Mr. Poole and his, his crew for the efforts for the Chamber of Commerce Street Lighting. Thank you to everybody who did show up to that. There were 200. 200 plus uh, visitors to the bonfire and the hot chocolate and hot dogs. So kudos to that entire team. Had a meeting with Valley in the Mountains, uh, starting to get some feet under, under that organization. So we should see some changes, positive changes in terms of tourism development and structure with that. Uh, we had a municipal developers meeting today, which um, uh, is rather disappointing on the outcomes. Um, but we'll, I think there's further discussion coming on that, on that one further down today. Other than that, that's uh, everything I have to report today. Councilor Memorial. Well, we had this last period was the EMM meeting. The reduced crew we were as energetic as we were in previous years. Uh, the branded Christmas trees were safe, we didn't heist any of them this time. So. Um, but uh, it was a uh, very well attended. There was a lot of delegates there, a lot of good discussion. Uh, we did a lot of uh, meetings where we were granted meetings with ministers and stuff like that. And the ones that uh, we didn't get uh, audiences with for 15 minutes uh, that then mean that their staff or if they were in the audience they didn't get promoted by us anyway uh, during the coffee breaks where I think we had more ministers during coffee breaks than uh, in the meeting so just as we didn't have a formal uh, meeting with them um, 
we did get our messages to them with the, our concerns that were brought forward. So, uh, but it was definitely a very significant trend talking to a lot of people out there where I think uh, everybody that was at delegation with the RCP and the Department of Justice was singing the same tune uh, due to uh, the increased crime in Manitoba with the meth crisis, uh, RCPs, police and costs and staffing levels along with the um, resulting this a slap on the wrists from the department at the end if they didn't catch it. So, um, our meeting with the Department of Justice staff, uh, they did have an executive director there, I believe is what his official title was, but I can't say for sure. Um, but we did bring up the police and costs, uh, the, the Crown Office here as well. Um, first they sh shot it down, but then they promised to take it back and we evaluated it after we did let that go. go. Uh, they also did inform us that uh, there is uh, a couple of initiatives brought forward through the Department of Justice and RCP in regards to tax, task force for uh, crime reduction. Um, they do have a task force currently up in the north and they're uh, funding two additional task force, one in Western District and one in Eastern, uh, our district which is Western. Uh, there will be two uh, special task force based in Dauphin and another one in Brandon. The one in Dauphin is going to be working closely with uh, Sergeant Campbell here and his members that he's reallocated there. Um, and then they'll, they'll take it from there. Um, our meeting with the RCP, again, we uh, brought some concerns forward, um, specific examples of concerns that were brought forward from citizens and things like that. Um, so they will be uh, talking with Staff Sergeant here on those looking forward, but they also did that inform us that uh, their staff is level um, in the province was up, what was it, 26%? Or, they were up to 17%, 17 was like 82 members across the province, in addition to what they had previous year. Um, and then they, they'll be working with closely with us on, on our specific issues and they will get back to us as well. So, um, the U.S. met with the Minister of Conservation and Climate, um, where we were hoping to meet with a different minister to do the separation of that department. They're still trying to figure out what department they look after and things like that. So the issues we had were more for a different minister. Um, but, uh, this minister um, did agree to bring those forward to him and pass all that on in regards to the uh, the lumber permits and that with the LP and spruce products from just an annual to an extended period of time. Um, with that, but they also did commit um, uh, for Council of White Holland and stuff like that that they need to come to um, the Swan Valley and take a tour, which uh, the minister greatly uh, uh, acknowledged that even bear bit that she has to this summer take a road trip and learn the province um, and she <coughs> did give us a shout out saying that she will be spending in Swan Valley to, to work because that is a major parks and recreation area of the province which is a very good thing. Um, uh, coffee breaks that I had, I'm um, dealing with the committee that I'm helping with here from UCN. I did manage to pull Minister Eichler to the side, uh, right after the bear pit. Um, he's the Minister of Economic Development, which looks after the colleges and universities. Um, just to put the bug in his ear um, regarding a program that's being put forward, or it's a great child right now from UCN, and um, the health facility here for an LPN to an RPN, or an LPN to an RN LPN program. Um, when he heard that, um, his ears perked up and he wants to see the uh, proposal as soon as possible on his desk and give it consideration. Uh, so that was good news. Uh, that ties in with their uh, 100 day mandate for that you get 200 nurses within a short period of time, so, along with the additional funding that they have for their budgets. Other than that, it was a good time. Did a lot of networking with a lot of uh, other counselors out there. And so, as I mentioned, I was up there every year you go there, the more people you recognize, and 
uh, using the two minute walk down the hallway that turns into half an hour because you just can't go two steps without turning around and talking with somebody and very notice. It was a good fun for us. I agree, it was a great conference. Um, I enjoyed the three speakers, uh, Mr. Griffin is the Duke uh, of community. He is so full of energy, that guy, he's, he's got a real deal of success. Uh, Joe McGinnis was excellent, he's an MD, the explorer, and I love the pictures of the Titanic that he took. Um, MJ Hager was the helicopter pilot, she had put a really interesting story, scary, scary story. But glad that she uh, came over and over. Um, the mayor and I had a meeting with Eileen Clark, which was uh, very well attended, and she came over. Uh, we <coughs> talked about the Friendship Center, and then we kind of got off kind of talking about assisting living complexes, and she gave me the name of a lady who would know more about it because McGregor he has a new one, and um, there. Um, a great thing for a community of seniors. <clears throat> uh, also this Saturday is the Mistletoe Magic Lights on at 7. So if any of you are out and about come to the museum, uh, there will be a couple of uh, wagons and horses, um, fire and hot chocolate and cookies. And, uh, was a big display of what used to be the Curry's farm display, and they refurbished it and got it all set up by the museum. It looks great. So, if you're around Saturday night, it's a little fun. Uh, I had a meeting at the CDC Music Care, and Lorianne is busy with her toy drives on um, Saturday afternoons. Uh, um, the motion at Red Apple. So if you're out on Saturday afternoon, go in and uh, purchase a toy from the movies I think um, I'm done. Yes. Okay, thank you. Culture Ray, I just forgot to go. Thanks. December 7th. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd offer to as long as they could call me my schedule, but they sort of wouldn't. So, December 7th, Saturday, 7th service, Sunday night, there at King's Hill at the United Church. Um, turkey's already being provided if you want to go. There'll be lots of food, there always is. If you want to go take some food, um, it's an incredible way to meet um, people who are new in the community, and it is a new thing for a good time. So, I recommend that we Thanks for watching. Okay, thank you. Councillor Moore. Just one thing I forgot about the amendment. Councillor Green would be happy to note, due to what I was concerning last year, compared to the minister who was speaking, they, they did totally rejig it. Um, that premier spoke the first day, the second day, the mayor was in the morning, and then lunch, and then the minister spoke after lunch. So it was open to the any opposition leader. And and I was gonna mention that but yeah definitely and then, you know what with uh, the with the five hundred delegates that were there, they no longer stayed in the hall and which was very respectful. So it was well done this year. <clears throat> on some of the services, I guess maybe I'll attend and maybe bring some meat or something like that. That can be a lot of Make sure you turn them on. <laughs> Just don't make them eat. Um, AMM, yeah, you know what, there's, it's, it's a little bit different in Granite, but still, it's, a, it's still a good venue to uh, to be able to go down to because I think a lot of our people still like to travel to Granite because it's fairly close. And, and we still get uh, you know, some pieces out of it for all of us to share and take home with us. Um, RCAP, I think they also will we'll cover that all fairly well. I think that uh, they understand that the concerns that we have as far as crime and all that goes and, and how we deal with that community. They did talk a little bit about <coughs> some communities that have had some town halls and 
and concerns were you know, back then was that you would be happy you know, lynchings or whatever, but they, what we heard from them was that they were very civil and, uh, and we gave the, the people the community an opportunity to, to meet with RCP and council and, and, and talk about that. So that's something definitely that uh, I've got to look at and I, I can't remember the fellow's name, I'm sort of on the far right, but uh, I definitely do want to chat with so him that. Yeah. He's our commanding officer, I believe, on the off. So uh, it was that was that was good there. I wasn't with the justice, but one thing with the justice that we heard in the bear pit was that it's a common theme across the whole convention and this crime. We heard that. It's, it doesn't matter if it's in Swanner or Paul or Thompson or you know, uh, down in the south or the southwest or southeast or the province or they're they're here in the all. So it's a common thing for provinces. Is uh, obviously pretty much on that, and, and have to work on some some things there to help communities combat uh, this because it's it's not a simple, it's just a crime. It's, it's more it's deep rooted within the communities and other social issues. Um, we did get to meet with Mr. Clark, uh, Mr. Uh, affairs and Foreign Affairs, I guess, and uh, we did speak about the Friendship Center housing. And that was one of the concerns that we brought forward. It. And she said no. So she says no one is is in that. So she said she would fight tooth and nail on that one. If that was the case. Yeah, she didn't tell me that. So uh, she uh, commended on us so again just our, our relationships with the whole indigenous people that we have in the valley and our working relationships and where we want to build them before. And I think today with one of our meetings uh, that we improve that forward. Um, yeah, we did. Councilor Freeze and I were there, and it was kind of funny because they gave us 15 minutes. But when we walked in, she seen us. She says, "You have all the time you want." So uh, we were the last ones, I think. Maybe I'm not sure, but we did spend a fair amount of time uh, talking there about a lot of different issues. Maybe not necessarily to her portfolio, but definitely because she understands what municipal relations is all about. So she definitely wanted to spend some time. And because there, there were some ministers who were lacking there. Um, she actually took some concerns of ours and was going to take them to those ministers for us. So she's she's uh, she's a great person to have on your side. Um, economic development, we talked a little bit about that at the plans for South of Manitoba, and they have a new interim board, which some of us were not quite crazy about this new board, but it is an interim board, and they are going to be appointing uh, members in the next year. And uh, we did speak with. Uh, Mr. Clark a little bit about that because she does sit on that because uh, that board was in the province. And uh, she did say that she would advocate perhaps to have a board member on the uh, board. So that's, uh, that's encouraging. <coughs> the emergency communication system for the premier student said it was not going to cost the, the municipalities a, a dime. And, and all of us were like, oh wow, this is great. We were, we were all kind of looking at each other like, really? You know, because we budgeted, you know, a fair amount of money for, for this upgrade for our bar hall and, and the rest of our uh, community. And so then finally at Bear Pit, they were asking the question. I think the minister actually kind of like, kind of steered right around it and everybody's still sitting there. I think Mr. Kroll will say to me, can you just not answer the question? And then uh, Mr. Helmer from Granite, he, uh, Finally, he just intervened and he said, you will still have to pay for your handsets. So the whole crowd, you know, you could just hear them because this is the, the answer they're looking for. So that is the answer. You will have to pay the monthly operation. That's right. Thank you. So um, other than that, yeah, the keynote speakers were really good. Um, just unfortunate that we never got a chance to, you know, quarter a few of the other ministers that we really wanted to do. And I and I do want to thank Mr. Kroll for taking the time to do this binder for us and it basically kind of outlined who we want to meet, kind of the questions so that we kind of stayed on track. And uh, it was really well done. So the municipalities see us walking around this and they were kind of like, hey, oh, wow. You know? So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, that was a good, good thing. So. But uh, anyways, from, from me, I think that's, that's it, so. Did you mention the kind of 50 drawings that they have for the King Bond game? Like, who did they give that money to? Do you remember? Like, the Jewish family in Jewish, remember with the fire? Yeah. Half of it, and then 
I don't remember who made it happen. Winning ticket holder. Pardon me? Winning ticket holder. Yeah, I would think that the winning ticket holder would get that money. We need to find it. We don't have in the half of the employees who are doing this. Why? Could have been. Yeah. The electoral ticket. But it was a good job. Yeah. Good boss. He made a lot of money. Absolutely. Go wrong. There you go. Yes, the game was great. We were surprised that the board of the Memorial's report. Who we set? And again, I believe much of the gentleman could be set be maybe a or a special meeting and maybe invite some other people in to talk about public safety and what our options are um, in terms of that. I, I just, it, it's, firstly, I just wonder there's crime everywhere in the world. So, of course, we have certain other things that we want to research. But compared to a lot of places, we're incredibly lucky. And we have first place in your town. It seems to me that speaking up our town in terms of being a safe place is, I don't want us to focus on the idea that there's a big crime problem here because in most places there isn't. It doesn't mean that they're in crime, it just means that compared to most places, we're actually pretty well off. Having said that, Public safety is a self evidently important issue, and making people feel safe is even more important. So, it seems to me that would be something that you spend some time on and talk about the options are, which includes increasing the control, increasing other alternatives, and considering all the alternatives so that we have the best alternatives to, to keep ourselves at an incredibly safe and and, and yes, I think that's a good idea we should do that. Just in responding to your worship's uh, information, Council Morio, Council Friesen, Mr. Kroll, thank you for representing us at AM, AMM. My apologies, I wasn't able to be there, uh, but thank you for, for representing us. Thank you. And I also had a chance to uh, pull uh, the Executive Director, Joe Massey, to the side and congratulate him on his retirement and wish him well uh, and uh, also congratulate the incoming uh, executive director uh, Mr. Dennis Wilcox so to having Dennis uh, so uh, there's uh, many great relationships that we've built uh, over the years. All right well, that sums that up so we'll move into new business and 8.1 result of the chief administrative officer who authorized the sign the Federal Procurement Instrument Access Agreement with the province of Manitoba under the Canadian Collaborative Procurement Initiative. Moved by Deputy Mayor Bertoni, seconded by Council Royal. Discussion. Council Royal and Council. Council Ray. Mr. Bolton, without more information. Yeah, so the uh, federal government has a uh, uh, has a lot of fields on uh, what they provide, and uh, they're offering it to just about as the properties is to get the soil out. And uh, each one of these fields, uh, you can take or leave it. So, for instance, if we uh, needed to, to buy a certain type of truck, you know, <coughs> the federal government might have available because they bought 100 of them. Um, we can either take it or leave it, and there's all kinds of things that we can do. So, join your department, your bulk buying power. Yes. Uh, but it's not, it doesn't tie us to anything, uh, and it, uh, you know, it, it's in compliance with the uh, Midwest Trade Partnership. It's, it's uh, completely up and up. Uh, all they do is uh, um, signature, and, and Terry wrote this for them because they did the signature to, to say that uh, we can participate when we wish. So that's very similar to like the game demonstrating company. It is, yes. My question was, it's actually kind of a great time following it, whether it's talks about long compliance and so on. We're not, it doesn't change anything in terms of what we do on our own. It'll be involved as if we want to be involved. Yeah, I just want to make sure that it's, it's, it, it's really it's free to opt in, free to opt out at any time. For, for each, each for, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Any okay. question? All in favor? Let's carry. 8.2 resolve that the emergency measures plan for 2020 be received. 
move by 20 second line comes to freezing. There's information there, discussion. Questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? It's carrying over what happens to the water goes to exactly. Result of the emergency measures of understanding memorandum of understanding with the R and Mountain be signed by Mayor and CAO and be forwarded to the R and Mountain for approval. Moved by the actual Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Gray. The actual memorandum of understanding actually shows R and just one guy with the Yeah, at the very bottom. Does it? Yeah. I'm so I was a little concerned because they've been very <coughs> Well, yeah. antagonistic. So and it, you know, it, it is Mountain, and I apologize, I'll change it to Mountain, but what was half was, um, I just want to work. The safety officer couldn't upload it, so he gave me a hard copy, and I just quickly reviewed it, and then I uploaded it, so I mean, it's, it's on me. So, so we decided we'll just make sure it has the right personality. Yes, it will be. Okay, it will be right. yes. okay. all in favor? It's carried. Result of the annual grant of $1,000 to the Swan River Association for Community Living, included in the 2000 financial plan, be approved for payment, moved by Councillor Freeze and seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Councillor Gray. Um, is that because they need more than $1,000? I mean, I, I, like, it just seems to like for an organization like the Association for Community Living, Seems to me there's a lot of things. I'm trying to figure out why we would. Is that what they've asked for? If that's what they've asked for, then I'm going to. I've been on this body in the past. Well, I know, but they got that 20 years ago. Cool. And, and, okay. So I'm, I'm going to vote for it because that's what we've done. Wait, is this for 2020? This is for 2019. Okay, so. The process I'm thinking in the in the future will change because they have to apply, right? Right. Yes. But the first, but more importantly, it should be a thousand dollars doesn't go as far now as it went when we got it when I was here before. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Was all that the chief financial officer be authorized to make arrangements with the TD Canada Trust? For the borrowings provided by the bylaw 6 2017, 8 2019, and 9 2019, once approval has been received, the municipal board. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Tony. Discussion? Councillor DeLoria. Um, I'm, I'm fine with, with this because it's already done, but we had talked in the past about, and the town did this many years ago, when we did borrowing, we would issue. Uh, bonds ourselves for our own people to buy. Can we look at doing that again? Um, I know we, we had talked about this some number of years ago and it never really went anywhere, but I hate sending money to Toronto or Montreal or wherever. You know, if, if we're going to pay interest, we may have to pay for our own people. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.1. Result of the accounts and as follows be hereby and hereby approved for payment. General checks number 252732 to for a total of 573,489.68. Payroll account checks number 5568 to number 5574 for a total of $107,014.24. Ruled by Councillor. We also my council. Discussion or questions? You have one. Maybe it's a couple. Maybe it's a recurring and your The BDR services payment for inspect park ministers. Maybe it was what we did last year, we did it earlier in this year. We just like that seems like a lot of money over and over again. Can you talk about the hall? It would call inspect our friends just for the pool hall in the end. Yeah. I just $13,000 seems a lot of money for 
you know, that's like for inspection. I, I, maybe there was more to it, and I, I'm, I'm not, you know, if that's what the bill is, that's what the bill is, but that just seemed like an incredibly high amount. That's on the suppression system? Well, I guess it's the fire, the fire alarms and sprinklers and fully real and all. I recognize that this was only $4,000 or $4,300 each, but it's still a lot of money for the inspection. I mean, it was repairs and inspections. I don't really understand. Um, the same with the demolish and cleanup of the two houses. I'm assuming we have that to the taxes and, and, and get the property in two years. <laughs> So, I, I could, well, no, we're getting that's what I'm paying for it because that's the end of the paradigm. So, we can all watch this out. For the discussion, uh, I've got something to here. The, the lines are still doing it. You can pick up. No. No, it's with that because I have to see exactly what it does. Right. So, uh, how, this is the right. This was included in the lines where you would take the pickup. Oh, okay. They just took forever to get back because I had a separate question. But they don't do their pickup. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. This is fine. This is included. During their operations, <clears throat> just the main thing. And I think this was kind of the end of two right? the dollars that came in from it's the Lions paper pickup that went to the ACL. Right. And I had to just learn how that process went. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Whereas on, under subsections 252 clause E of the municipal act, municipality may, for municipal purposes, use municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property. And whereas under subsections 252 1 clause A, the municipal exercising powers of the nature of those referred to in clauses 252 B, C, and E may set terms and conditions in respect to users, including setting the rates of amounts of deposits and their charges and charging and collecting them. And whereas in subsection 252.2, a charge referred to in clause 1a may be collected by the municipality in the same manner as a tax may be collected or enforced under this act. Whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding accounts as listed below. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the following unpaid accounts be added to the corresponding property tax rule that collected in the matter, in that matter. Invoice 15615 from July 31st, 2019 for 4750 grass cutting, uh, total uh, 2986. Invoice 15699 August 20, 2019, $79 of demolition, charges 296.25, totaling 8196 Invoice 15602 July 24, 2019, $494.49 for water meter. 72 of the charges, 519 total. Invoice 303804900 to 3 July 9, 2019, 149.87 for the utility, 149.87 is the total. Invoice 15616, July 31st, 2019, 185 for grass cutting, charges 924, total 9444. 1201006.01, March 29, 2018, 13681 for the utility, 13681 is total, totaling 89,367, and charges totaling 3,352 grand total 9,246.24. Be it further resolved, notices be sent to the property owners detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for the unpaid property taxes, effective July, January 1st, 2020. Moved by. 
House with Dolores and by the Mayor of Tony discussion. Well, Councillor Craig. Although it's six invoices, it's three packages. Right. <laughs> All right, for the discussion. All in favor? Result of financial statements for the 10 months ending October 31st, 2019 be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Tony, said by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Mr. Cole, um, how are we looking for your end balance? Like, are we going to be in a surplus situation? Oh, yes. So, if, if we are in a surplus, is there an ability for us to take that? Surplus and provide it towards last year's deficit prior to the rent. Uh, I can certainly yes. Yeah, because we have, if, if we can, we have one more meeting before the rent to make that. Or if it just, if you have a surplus, instead of setting it to nominal surplus, where we got the hoops to get it all out, if we can make a payment. Ooh, that's a really good point I, on last year's deficit, then that's a Less amount for next year's budget. Yeah, because once it goes into nominal surplus, there's a bunch of hoops and balances. Yeah, and if, we if we don't make the minimum, we can't pull it out. So, like, whatever we can go, like, not that it puts us in for some it's 20,000, whatever that's 20,000, that's we have to tax here to get to a zero balance. Oh, that's what I didn't Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11 1. Resolve that the bylaw 12 2019 be a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish the maximum speed limit for highways or portions of highways for which the town of Swan River has jurisdiction be read a third time and final time. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor Gray. This is a recorded vote. Any further discussion? All in favor? Resolve that by resolve that bylaw 13 2019 be the bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish waste collection, disposal, and recycling systems be read a second time. Moved by Councilor Memorio, seconded by Mayor Tony. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? No, yeah, I, I didn't mean to post them about the principal. Okay. I mean, I mean they were generally on the principal talk. You didn't mean to this. It's not a public hearing. Pardon? It will be a public hearing about the full amount of the vote. That was just a request from one of the councils. It's not required by the province, but. I think mean, we wanted for transparency and we're to do that. So the public hearing at least we can get it scheduled as January 7th. So. This, this isn't for the charges, this is just for the process. process. Yeah. So if we wanted the public's opportunity to speak on it, that letter to you I mean, Charles talked about the letter can the letter can state that date. So that everybody I was just getting confused at what was I got in the mail today about the yeah, that's for the charges. Right. So that's, that's different than this. That's next. Okay. Result, result of pursuit of sections 153 of the Municipal Act. This <coughs> the committee imposed the meeting to the public to discuss the following items personnel uh, matter and negotiations. Sorry. Right. Um, on eleven two. Yeah. We didn't vote that. Okay. Okay. All. Okay. So back on eleven point two. Uh, do you want me to read the rest? Oh no, we did because I that's what I said. I yeah, yeah, because you you abstained. Abstained. Yes. 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 And I said carried. 
Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. I checked the video. Yes. I didn't remember voting, but that's why, because I was concerned. Okay. I had it all staged too quick. I just I didn't see hands. That's okay. Resolved that pursuant to Order 52 3 of the Municipal Act, comes with the committee and close the meeting to the public to discuss the following items personnel matters, development negotiations. Sorry, I just have a question. Are we not able to do what we need to? Our municipal governor's um, resolution to this meeting, or will that be the following meeting? I'm not sure. All right. I would like to Okay. On legal matter. So we'll just add legal matter on there. Okay. Move by. Councilor Ray, second by Tutorial. <coughs> okay. Resolved that the CEO and Public Works Director carry out direction given in camera. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Resolved that this regular meeting of Council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried.